So I recently bought this old Myford ML7 metal lathe. This is really exciting because I've wanted to get a lathe for quite a long time now and I will no longer have to pay machinists to do small jobs for me. It came with some tooling and almost everything that I need to get started with machining, although this lathe did not come with a stand, so in this video I'm going to show you how I built mine. Keep in mind this lathe stand is built specifically to fit my Myford ML7 lathe, but with some minor adjustments you could make this fit many other lathe models or you could even use this design to make a very sturdy workbench. I guess I'll start by going through all of the steel that I ordered. I purchased four pieces of one and a half inch square tubing cut to 44 inches in length and four pieces cut to 15 inches in length, four pieces of two inch steel angle cut to 34 inches in length, two pieces of one and a half inch steel angle cut to 15 inches in length, a 12 inch length of two inch flat bar, two pieces of one and a half inch by two inch flat bar cut six inches in length, and a sheet of 11 gauge steel 44 inches by 18 inches. I created this model in Fusion 360 before starting this project. The Myford ML7 manual provided me with information on recommended table height, as well as provided all the dimensions for the mounting holes. The first thing that I did was weld up two rectangles using the 1.5 inch square tubing. I do not have a welding table, so I purchased this 90 degree welding clamp to ensure that all of my tubing would be lined up nice and straight. This heavy duty clamp saved me a lot of time and securely held the steel while welding. The table top will be fastened to one of these rectangles, so in order to ensure that it sits flat, I flattened out the welds on just one side of one of the rectangles. The next step was to weld on the 2 inch angle for the legs. Before doing this, I had to slightly round off the outer edges of the square tubing. This is because the steel angle has a small inside radius. The lower support needs to be welded on 4 inches from the ground. I did this simply by clamping on a piece of tubing to the inside edge of each leg and then dropping the second rectangle down on top of that. This way I knew that it was sitting perfectly flat. I then tacked it into place and double checked everything to make sure that it was square before welding it solid. Okay, so even though my table is perfectly square, the floor that I'll be sitting on may not be perfectly flat. So I'll be attaching these leveling feet that I found on Amazon. They are pretty expensive, but seem to be high quality. I cut the flat bar into two inch squares and then drilled and tapped holes in the centers to match the thread of the adjustable feet. The squares could then be welded to the bottom of the table legs. The final step before painting is to weld on the upper supports, which the lathe feet will be fastened to. This part requires precise measurement. Drilling these holes or welding supports just a few millimeters off will cause the mounting holes of your lathe to not line up with the mounting holes on your table. Once the upper supports were welded into place, I clamped down the tabletop and then drilled up through the bottom so that all the mounting holes were lined up perfectly. Okay, so now that all the welding's done, I'm going to use this grease remover so that I have a nice clean surface for the paint to adhere to. I went with a black semi-gloss paint for the main table frame. I started out by using a brush, but ended up finding it much quicker to just use a roller. The next step was to make the raising blocks. The raising blocks consist of jacking screws and can be used to remove any twist in the lathe bed. If your lathe isn't perfectly level, it can result in a taper on any turning. I followed a video by Steve Jordan where he explains how important it is to test your lathe for bed twist. He also demonstrates in great detail how to adjust and align the bed to remove any turning tapers. Definitely check out his video if you would like to learn more on this. I'll be making my own raising blocks rather than purchasing a set. 
The design is quite simple. I'll be using the one and a half inch by two inch flat bar to make them. I started by drilling two holes in each piece to align with the lathe's mounting holes. I then threaded the holes to house half inch by one inch fine thread bolts. These bolts need to be drilled out through the center so that the mounting bolts can pass through. I temporarily had my lathe set up on a small workbench held down by wood screws and drilled through the center of the bolts using a 5 16 drill bit. I then used a facing tool to flatten out the top of each bolt. I chamfered the edge of the threaded holes in the raising blocks so that the bolts would tighten down all the way. This is how the mounting hardware will be assembled. Rather than painting the entire table black, I decided to try clear coating the tabletop and raising blocks using Flood Penetrol. It was really easy to apply and I really like the finished look of it. I'm really curious to see how well it holds up over the years. So at this point I could put everything together, level out the table, and then lift the lathe into place. I also ended up making a bracket for the on-off switch. But yeah, that's about it. I'm really happy with how the table turned out. Many lathes are housed on top of drip trays, although I'm not running a coolant system, which is why I'm okay with just using the flat top. I'm pretty darn new to machining, and I'm learning a lot through books and YouTube videos. I've also been learning how to grind my own high-speed steel tooling. Anytime that I want to learn a new skill, I sort of just jump right into it and learn as I go one step at a time. Anyways, I'm really excited to start making parts of this lathe. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's different from what I normally post, so let me know what you thought in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.